tenth day in April 1945, Harry S. Truman was sworn in as President of the United States just four hours after a massive cerebral hemorrhage had ended the life of Franklin D. Roosevelt. Chief Justice Harlan Stone administered the oath of office. Throughout America, in our far-flung military encampments, flags flew at half-mast for the fallen leader. The funeral procession moved slowly through the streets of the stunned and saddened capital. People wept openly along its course. Mr. Roosevelt had appeared drawn and weary upon his return from the Yalta Conference six weeks earlier, but no one had any premonition that death was so imminent. Few presidents have been so well loved by the masses of people or so well hated by some groups. From the time he took office in 1933, in the depths of the Depression, he fought for the rights and the security of the oppressed. His remains were brought to the Hyde Park estate, where four times he received word that his countrymen had chosen him their president. Senator Barclay, whom he called Dear Alban, Supreme Court Justice Fred Vinson, New York Senator Herbert Lehman, Chief of Staff George Marshall with Admiral Ernest King, and Treasury Secretary Henry Morgenthau were with the family at the graveside. All shared the grief and apprehension of the fighting free world when the towering figure of Franklin Roosevelt passed from its scenes.